guys, Bowen come back at you with another highlight reel um, from the Valus Corpus Discord channel. Um, this one's going to be the Warrior's Code, and what a session it was. Oh my god, like, my players are making it so hard to do highlight reels of these videos because um, they're just so good. I mean, I don't know where to cut it anymore, um, but we need these highlight reels, so I make them anyway so everyone can see... Uh, you don't have to watch the whole four-hour thing if, if you don't have the time. And um, But man, everyone was in character. Every combat was high tension. And uh, every every roll of the dice... <laughs> yeah, Maurice. Every roll of the dice counted. Uh, it was insane. So enjoy. Watch it. I know it's probably going to be frustrating because it feels like the video has to keep cutting off every time it gets interesting because it's always interesting. Like we did, We just had like a straight session of just amazing content. So... Just go ahead and give it a watch, let me know what you think, and uh, keep following us, and look for more of these. Oh, oh god, fuck oh, it! I'm god. just gonna point out one of those I'm pretty sure Gust of detention, small gust of wind, please. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Mage hand that's just in the air going this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys warm yourselves in here, um, our final adventurer is Finally. a bit lost in the frozen wastes as they uh, they lag behind the rest of the party. And Rika is met by an older, bearded individual out on the roads. I shall put him up. As you are walking out into the wastes, seeming a little bit lost, you're like worrying you might not make the meeting in time, you notice this older individual come out humbling upon a walking staff and looks at you and says, Oh, hello there, young woman. What are you doing so far out into the wastes? Hello there. I am a mercenary from Valis Corpus. I am here on a job. I'm looking for a village nearby. Awesome. And uh, before I have him respond, would you like to describe your character? Sure. Uh, so Rika is a uh, relatively medium height, uh, dark haired, uh, half elf rogue who is um, has very bright emerald green eyes that can look m almost like gems. And she has two daggers out of her hips. She wears brown knee-high boots and uh, white clothes with uh, gold um, emblems on them. Ooh, I love the description. She sounds like she means business. That sounds like an adventurer if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> the old man responds to your question and goes, Yes, my village is nearby. It's actually off of this path. You may have been a bit lost, mercenary. <laughs> Do you need some help? Uh, I might be possibly lost. I just want to make the meeting on time. I was like, well, if you'll indulge an old man, he puts an arm out. I could use help walking back myself. Oh, <laughs> I will help. So she puts an arm under his, and you guys start walking towards the village. And he'll ask you as you guys walk, and he says, I notice you're from the Valor Scorpus Skilled. Have you worked for such a such a high re reputation band for, for long? I've only done uh, a few jobs thus far, um, but I used to work for a thieves' guild. So this isn't my first rodeo. So you may not be much, he says as he's like walking on his staff, you may not be much of a, uh, a warrior then, are you? More of a thief? My moments. Well. As you guys start to come up to the edge of the village, he kind of like reaches a hand out. In these lands, you will become one yet. And he takes you into the great hall. All right. He will explain as he draws a dagger from his belt. 
and brings it to his hand, just pricking the finger, enough to draw blood. And he says, This is a trial by combat. If you succeed in defeating the gods chosen, they will bless us for the rest of our journey. Do you still wish to proceed? Well, I'm glad that you said champion at the end, because if we had to fight gods now, I don't like our chances. <laughs> I will proceed. Same. I'll grab the notch of uh, one of the blades of the great axe and unbeknownst to make a large gash across my hand instead of like a small little prick. Just a... I will pull out my dagger and make a prick on my finger because I'm a lady. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I have at least some of mine. It's because I'm a lady. Everything, everything needs a woman's touch. All right. Yes. So each of us takes part in the ritual, drawing blood in our own way and touching it upon the stone, letting the uh, the blood darken into iron and freeze over from the colds. As you guys step back, Birger looks at all of you and says, Now we see if mercenaries are warriors. And draws his axe as he stands ready. And you notice the obelisks begin to hum with power, glowing almost iridescently with like this bluish hue. Until all at once and suddenly... A lightning bolt flashes from amidst the clouds in the sky and strikes the obelisk, creating this arcing electrical field that eventually kind of flashes, blinding you all at first. And as you gain, as you regain senses, a mighty creature stands before you. What size are we talking here? We're talking oh. <laughs> something at least along the lines of eight feet tall. It is a okay. colossal being of great magnitude as it wields this frozen axe. As it appears, Pardo's going to very hurriedly like get a piece of parchment out and scribble down on top of it a note and hand it to Rasha that just says, Can I please speak, bro? Please. <laughs> Talk, idiot. <laughs> Push towards the thing. <laughs> I know, push him toward it! Alright, so I'm just gonna like start circling around. Not gonna make any sudden moves or go forward, but yeah, I'm just gonna start circling. Alright, so. Ah, uh, sneak attack, I little, see what you're doing. Little gap in the tribal ta uh, in the in the tribal tattoos starts glowing with some astral. astral cyan type. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> So, as we are about to begin combat, this colossal, Jotun-looking monstrosity roars out, Yegbringer Dolden, saying, I bring death in the Belgardian oh, tongue. I was, gonna, I was gonna use a first level spell slot for comprehend languages, but okay. <laughs> it grips its axe mightily and charges the party head on. And so depending on how these rolls go, we'll wipe, or we'll all be saved. Uh, so it's on me right now, isn't it? Well, not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Rika, Rasha, and Birger, in that order, let's go. Rika, what are you gonna do? Is it more of these uh, daggers? Uh, yep, we gotta redo the daggers. All right, so we're gonna roll the two daggers and the two d4s. Ooh. All right, go one hit. Only one. One hit. Uh. All right. Well then, um, uh, I guess I'll just roll the uh, roll the attack then, or roll the damage anyway, for the one hit. Uh, okay. Wait, what the? Oops, I rolled the wrong one. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. One moment. Probably twenty-two damage. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled the wrong button. Well, you got one <laughs> hit. of Avenus looking at. All right. Holy f 10 damage. <laughs> Very nice. Is he dead? Oh, he's dead. 
<laughs> but this combat's yeah. not over. <laughs> what? All the simultaneous attacks are gonna go off still. Okay. So we're just gonna see I how the dice. You were gonna come back and bite me. We're gonna see how the dice are gonna rule this. Essentially, it's all up to the dice. So we know he's dead. But all the attacks are still gonna happen. So Bjerger, not to overshadow Rasha. Bjerger, because it's gonna move while still maintaining um, the five foot radius of the Freakman Wolf to the other side of Rasha. And he is going to ready an action to intercept any wolf that comes behind you or tries to get at you. Thank you. <laughs> so he's not going to attack the freedom wolf, and he's essentially going on defensive mode to help keep you alive. And as those Very wolves come cool. in, he's going to hit them. So what's Rasha going to do? Um, the exact opposite of what Biago wants me to do, um, <laughs> which is charge directly towards the freedom wolf. Uh, uh, and do a great, uh, great axe swing. All right, send it. Mm. Come on, one d four with bless. Wouldn't even be enough. Really? What's the AC? Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, so there's exactly. What is it, two wolves left after that thunder blast? Plus the freaked so There's three attacks that are about to go off, and we're about to see what's happened to the party. Bjerger is going to intercept one of the wolves. He's going to try and strike it with a d20 plus, what is it, whatever. Oh. Fucking hell! Oh. <laughs> and that wolf's going to attack him. Uh, regular wolf. Like Bite. Frickin' oh. crit! Eech! Owie! Owie! <laughs> 14 damage. Okay, still up, still up. We're Which means 28 with the crit. Oh. He has, uh, well, no, it's it's 14 after the crit. It's already calculated. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, the regular little wolfies can't hit that hard. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was gonna but say. He, he's at two health and survives, and he missed the wolf on his way, stopping it from getting to you. The other little wolf is going for Rika. Oh, God, I hope it misses. I'm just scared. Ah! All right, bite. Send it, game. Oh, it's lagging. That's a 20. A little wolfy bitey. Seven damage. Ay, rolling high. Seven? Seven damage. Okay, I can I can come back from that, I think. Let me look. Let me look. I think I can survive How that. How are you still alive? <laughs> oh, that, dude, we can live that. We can? How? <laughs> I had 21 hit points and I haven't taken damage until this fight. I'm still at five health though. So please, for the love of goodness, don't kill me. Wow. <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. Okay. This is, what the? F now, how am I going to determine who the Frigden Wolf hits? Because it's yeah. the final hit and this will all be over. Uh, I'm right in front. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can't come back from this. I can use a dusty point. Oh god, I don't know what to do. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna have to let the dice determine it because I just can't decide. So, D4 again. Rasha 1, Rika 2, Bjerger 3, 4. It's a 1. Bjerger, oh! It's a 1. Oh! Was that Rasha? That's me. Rasha. That's Rasha. Let's do this, boys. Let's do this. He, might, he might miss. He might miss. Two. Rasha, I know that you two were close, and you have my condolences, truly. Thank you. Yet move. Do you, do you want to bury him before we move on? Um, if that's all right. That is true. I understand. That is true. Yeah. Um, uh, I walk over to, uh, what is left of Povo's body? <laughs> we haven't given him an opportunity to say his final words, by the way, actually, now that I remember. If we if he if he'd like to take advantage. I don't want to cut you off. I'm just like we usually do that with everyone who passes. If TGA is still there. Uh Trip the game. Polo's final words. Plan my ashes and smoke me bright. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
very well annoying. Did he say put up my ashes and smoke me? Yeah, it's a how high reference. Oh, <laughs> uh, got you. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I heard that right. I was like, hold it. <laughs> Your wish is my command, you very annoying friend. All right, you may play into rest um, however you will. Go ahead, I'll be right back. I walk over to Polo's body, and um, uh, I place a hand on his chest, uh, my eyes, and kneel down. Um, I'm going to turn back to the rest of the group and say, um, all bets, good or evil, at least I like to think, are all written in the same book. And that is why death itself is so painful, yet also so beautiful. It is sometimes forgotten to be more than just swinging and smashing. It is a dance. It is a wonderful thing. But it does pain me when it does come to those that I care about. Um, I take my hand off his chest, and, um... <laughs> uh, I light up a torch and kind of set fire uh, to the corpse. <laughs> he says he wants to be cremated, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I put my hand on, on Rush's shoulder and say, He is smoking in the great beyond now. I'm sure he is happy. <laughs> and believe it or not, uh... Very, very gross, you're... Um, a mysterious <laughs> cloud appears overhead. I was say, um, <laughs> Birger will join in too, just before you light the body, and he'll take whatever weapons that uh, Polo had on himself and kind of position his arms and everything like a warrior and put it together, and then kind of like step back to allow Rasha the honor of burning what's left of him. And he puts a hand, Jurger will put a hand on Rosh's back and say, If you're not a warrior, he fought bravely. He will meet the gods in the mead halls. He was a true warrior. That means a lot, thank you. All right. But as not his, do not let this go to waste. We will not let his sacrifice be in vain. It is time to go inside and end this curse. For good. <laughs>